Positively Ernie with Ernie Anastas, a New York TV legend and radio host with great positive stories and interviews. Thanks, Ernie. You're the best. And now, here's Ernie. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. Back again. I love doing this program, and it's positive. And when we talk about positivity, I want to introduce you to somebody that I think is a very positive, uplifting person. You know her. She's a household name. Nicole Miller is here, ladies and gentlemen. Here she is. So nice to have you. Hold my hands. Great to see so you. So good to see yeah. you, Nicole. I mean, listen, who doesn't know you? I mean, a fashion <laughs> designer, businesswoman, great personality. Uh, I want to talk to you about so many things today. You feel comfortable here? Yeah, love it here. You, you like your, the environment? Is it nice? very comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I, I have so many things to talk to you about. You just told me you came back from Paris, right? Yeah, yesterday. Uh -huh. You were in Paris. Now, Paris is important to you because I, I read, you know, that you went to RISD in, right. in, in, in Rhode Island. Great Great school, but then you were in Paris, and that was like a very intense kind of an experience for you. Tell us about that, and now you went back, so I want to hear about it. Well, I always had an affinity for Paris because my mother is Parisian. Yeah. So I always, you know, to me, like I grew up with that whole Parisian thing in my head, and so mm. I always wanted to spend time in Paris. So um, I decided when I was at RISD to take, um, I rigged up my own exchange program and went to oh. Paris for a year, nice. sophomore year, and went to an haute couture school, which Yves Saint Laurent and a lot mm. of the famous designer, French designers Oh, what went an influence, to. yeah. Yeah, it was great, and it was great to just, you know, spend the whole year there and, and really get to know the city and polish up on my French. Yeah, do you and speak French now? Yeah, uh-huh. Oui, oui. Oui, mais oui. <laughs> <laughs> I had a little French in in school and, and it's funny how you remember things it's like when I had French in college and I, I can I memorize le matin je me lève à 7 heures je me lave je m'habille je descends dans la salle à manger je dis bonjour à mes parents and you know I, I'll throw that out <laughs> well, once in a while just I, it out just comes out like fast. that <laughs> so you speak French but your mom really had a lot of influence on, on you because she felt that the Parisians and it's true really dressed beautifully well she was very chic yeah. uh, very chic and I had all these amazing pictures of her and she was always like dressed really well mm. I I still have some of her old like platform shoes and oh. I had I mean I've lost some of the things over time but she had these like big shoulder pad jackets and oh, everything wow. yeah so I, ha I have great photos of her that um, and that always like I found very inspiring well, and I actually like wore a lot of them like when I was in high school and college isn't that nice to have that kind of relationship well you know you talk about your mom but I also know about your your dad who was an engineer with GE yes. and, and and he had an influence on you as well as as, as a designer perhaps well, I always felt I was very technical. And, you know, oddly enough, my, my best subjects in, in high school, not yeah. college, were yeah. like chem chemistry and physics and, mm. and trig and, you know, wow. calculus. <laughs> That's pretty good. So, yeah, I was always like really good with numbers and everything. Yeah. So when I was in high school, I always got a lot of pressure to go and, you know, follow that path. But I was so obsessed with fashion. There, there wasn't any changing my mind at that point. No, you knew, right? You, you had you had a, an understanding of yourself. You knew where your gift was. Now, you started your, your first boutique, your first store in 1986, Madison Avenue, right here in New York. Yes. And yes. now you've gone on to do great <laughs> things. Did you dream when you were, you know, 1986, how, how big your product, your name, your fashion, your style would become? Well, I guess, I think when you're in design school, you always have that fantasy of having your own brand. Yeah. And so I was always thinking, well, I would, you know, want my own brand by the time I was like 30 or something. Mm. <laughs> and I think I actually had it before then through a strange set of circumstances because the company I was working for kind of went out of business. Uh -huh. So it, w it was financed by a larger company and they were out of money. So we just left. I left with my... Um, my boss at the time uh, and who became my business partner and we started this business like on a hundred thousand dollars wow but since That's we didn't have the other business anymore we had to change the name so the obvious thing was to just call it my name well uh, and, and a good name indeed i mean it really has caught on but you you've done so many marvelous things i i, I want to ask you about uh, the the first like uh, the first dress that you designed it was supposed to be like oversized or something but it was a big hit well, you know, it was funny because <clears throat> since we didn't have a lot of money behind us, it was really important that my first collection went out and sold. And I came up with this dress the first season. I had kind of a little mandarin collar and little buttons, but that was the only thing that Asian looking uh -huh, about it. The uh -huh. rest of it was this oversized blue sun dress. And back in the 80s, everything was like very large, shoulder yes, pads true. and big sleeves. And For men and a, women. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is a really oversized dress. Yeah. And we put on the hanger and we said, this thing is never going to sell. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. And, you know, everybody goes, I'll put hanger straps in there. And I go, no, no, no. We're just going to, like, ship it as it is. 
And it went out, and it sold like crazy. I like heard. It sold like thousands and thousands and thousands. And we yeah. couldn't even find enough fabric to, to fill the orders that Incredible. we were getting. Yeah. And it was selling in every department store. And if you walked around, like New York City, like in the springtime, yeah. everybody had that dress on. Amazing. That was like a big $5 million hit, I read, right? Yeah, really, yeah. We Huge. ended up doing, we did do $5 million the first year in business. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, largely due to that dress. Do, do you think, uh, Nicole, that kind of like, <clears throat> you know, got it all started, put you on the map, so to speak? Well, it certainly gave me enough <laughs> yeah. leverage to keep going. More than that 100000 when yeah, you started, I right? Know, yeah, I know, because, you know, businesses, I mean, you know, money just goes out the window yeah. before you know it. So when uh, someone asks you and they say, and I'm asking you now, you know, how do you describe your style? I mean, you know, it, it, uh, what words would you use to say this is what Nicole Miller's style is all about? What is it? Well, you know, I've always called myself the uptown downtown girl hmm. and you know i always have a ton of friends on the upper east side and then i live in tribeca so i was always sort of like a mix of the two yeah and it's also like the good girl bad girl so uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. yeah i got it <laughs> so it was always i would make like you know the pretty dress and put a leather jacket over it mm. which actually got to be quite a big trend but it was always the kind of thing i was doing from the very beginning right you know combining kind of like the masculine hard edge thing with mm -hmm. the soft feminine yeah and that really became my signature yeah distinctive <laughs> i know has it evolved over time i mean you know i mean you're you're down at the the fashion center right well trends change every you know trends do change and I mean I, I went from wearing those making those big oversized dresses right, in the 80s right. to making kind of very sexy bodycon dresses like in the you know 90s and the aughts but you know trends change and you just adapt to them but I think that signature is always still there you yeah. still see like the contrast you know and, and mm -hmm. combining yeah. you know the tough with the soft you know, I, I've uh, I've talked to a lot of um, uh, celebrities who are uh, musicians and, and recording artists over the years. I won't I won't name them all, but I mean, there are several who have said, you know, my music is distinctive, and I want to keep it that way. And so, therefore, I don't really listen too much to what others are doing, but especially during the the early creative years, I want to just focus on on what I like, what I want to do, and not pay attention to somebody else's music. Is that the same way? I mean, do you kind of like say, you know what, I don't want to see what anybody else is doing because it might influence me and I might end up copying it or whatever. Do you kind of keep it pure in terms of what you are, what Nicole Miller is all about? Well, I mean, you try to keep it pure, but I mean, you can't live in a, a closed room. Right, exactly. <laughs> And I think every designer out there yeah. is influenced by another designer. Uh -huh. Or some maybe it's somebody like in the past, it could be somebody like current. And I think everybody tries to make everything their is own Is there way. someone that influenced you? Someone in well, particular? You know, I mean, because when I was in, in living in Paris, I mean, right. I used to love like Pierre Cardin. Sure. That was like my favorite. But could I yeah. make clothes that look like Pierre Cardin? Yeah. <laughs> no. But, um, you know, and I always liked Yves Saint Laurent. And I, I kind of always... He always has a little bit of that masculine touch, right, too, with right, the, the right. tuxedos and that sort of thing. But it's an but influence. I, it's an influence, yeah. but I don't think I've ever really made anything that was, you know, that similar to either of theirs. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I think it's always good to see what's going on. And, I mean, I sometimes I see designers doing things that are so literal mm. and so obviously somebody else's that it's embarrassing. And uh -huh. I just don't know why they do that. But, I mean, and I had a couple of assistants once yeah. who kind of made versions of other people's designs without telling me. Okay. Because if they get an inspiration of somewhere, you know, please show me because right. I'll make that judgment mm -hmm. whether it's like, a, you know, an acceptable sure. new idea or looks different enough yeah. or whatever. And I, I had a couple of designers I actually fired because they did really? things that, that were too derivative for um, me and, mm. and didn't tell me. Very interesting. Yeah, now, so. you know, a lot of people are, are watching and they're listening to uh -huh. us where we're everywhere. Yeah. And I'm sure that they're saying, you know, ask her this question because I talk to a lot of people. That's my job. And, and many people say, you know, I, I, I'm uncomfortable sometimes when I have to wear a, a good designer and the logo, the name is like, wow, it's, it's bigger than, than the sweater. 
It's like all over the place. It's so huge. Um, there are a lot of people who are uncomfortable with that and wish that they would kind of pull back a little bit. And, you know, use your logo, use your name, but don't overdo it. I want to get your opinion on that. I what totally agree. Yeah. And I remember when Bottega Veneta had that campaign, when yeah. your own initials are enough. Mm. And I thought that was great. Yeah. And I almost feel like we should go back to that. But I, do, I don't mind like a little subtle touch. Right. But I went into these designer stores in Paris, and they've got the brand across the sweatshirt, you know. Right. And like, You're like a billboard. I know. It's ridiculous. I know. And, and also, the people that actually buy those pieces yeah. are kind of fashion victims. That can be a problem. And, you know, the, the unfortunate thing is that many times, whatever the uh, happens to be, a, a sweater, a jacket, and so forth, it's good. It's really nice. But the name just is so overpowering that it spoils it. It just takes away from, I yeah, think, from I the beauty. I always feel like they should pay me to wear it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm, if I'm going to be the People, billboard. People, I'm sure, saying that. <laughs> hey, let me ask you about, I'm going to bring out a name and I want to see, get your response. Barbie doll. <laughs> I read a story about the Barbie doll that Mattel came to you and said, we want you to design your own version of the Barbie doll. Tell us about that. Well, actually, I did two Barbies. You did? Yeah. And it's, they're actually, um, it was quite a while ago, you know, probably like 25 years or yep. so ago. Yeah. And I still have several in my office. Um, one was called City Shopper, and I don't remember exactly the name of the other one. Mm -hmm. But um, they were, it was really a fun project. And I remember it. every time I went to a personal appearance, yeah. literally like 200 people would line up outside for me to sign their, their Barbies. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it has a huge draw. And anyway, and it's great to see this year, like with the movie and I everything. Know. Perfect timing for it. I know. It but, but I have to ask you, I understand that you never, you personally never had a Barbie doll. Well, it was because my mother was from France. <laughs> yeah. And all our dolls came from France. Right. And they all had French names. It was Nadine and Marie Claire and Francoise and everything. Exactly. We all had French dolls. Yeah. And um, I was like, oh, I want a Barbie. I want a Barbie. And my mother was like, no, you're not getting a Barbie. Oh, <laughs> see that? Yeah. But look, look at what you did. Uh, you <laughs> you know, had to get my own. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That, that's a pretty good deal. Um, I, I wanted to ask you about, you know, uh, people like Beyonce and Sheryl Crow and so many others who wear your clothes. Um, how, how does that work out? Because people say, you know, it's kind of nice when major personalities are wearing your fashion, your style. How do you feel about that? And how does that work? Oh, it's fabulous. Yeah. I just love it. And Beyonce has been great because, well, she wore, you know, a lot of things over the years. And there was one dress that has like buttons that look like a necklace on it that mm. she wore to perform in. I've mm. got great pictures of her in that. Wow. But also, um, you know, so she's like, you know, we've lent her stuff, borrowed stuff over the years, but her stylist would also go into our store in LA and just yeah. pay retail. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Mean, which is great. Yeah, it really so, is. So that was great. And then Cheryl Crow, I did a bunch of custom stuff for her over the years. So right. There yeah. was, um, yeah, there was a dresser she particularly liked that I made in several versions. Uh, that's a nice thing. I mean, it's, it's to your credit, obviously. And, you know, you also, you also design men's clothes. Yes. Ties, especially. I mean, I, I, you should have brought a tie I, in for me today. Next time you come in, I want a tie. <laughs> What's it like when, you know, switching off men, women? Well, you know, the, the men's whole men's business kind of came out of the women's business yeah. because when we opened up that store on Madison Avenue, yeah. uh, my business partner said, oh, and I was making silk scarves for the mm. store out of some of my favorite prints that okay. I used over the years. So he said, well, why don't you make me, you know, a couple of ties or whatever. So I took three prints and I made like a few ties. But um, at the time manufacturer said I was going to make like three ties. And he, they said, well, we want to make like 36. Mm. So I put the rest of them in the Madison Avenue store and then they flew out and they were begging wow. for more. Wow. Yeah. And the funniest thing was that we had done, we'd put um, a theater ticket tie and I had the Metropolitan Opera on it. Oh, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> that was a great seller. It sold Big a sell. lot. Yeah. And then the Met gift shop came and said, oh, we want to sell that in our store. Mm. So we were selling them for a long time to the Met and everything. That's and then great. we got a letter from the Met, uh, cease and desist, and you don't have the rights to this or something. We said, oh, really? Been, oh, it became a problem. No, no. Yeah. They said, we said, you're crazy. We've been selling these to you for years. <laughs> yeah. Is that, so, so how did said, that get settled? They said, okay, forget it. <laughs> Unbelievable. You know, when you talk about ties, I, I love ties. I mean, yeah. you know, being on the air for so many years, I, I didn't even want to, this is embarrassing. You know how many ties I have at home? And I've collected them over 40 years, probably about 800 ties. Oh my God. No, I'm serious because a lot of them have been gifts, you know, uh, whatever it is, holidays and so forth. But I just love ties. And so few men do these days. I know. But you know what? I, I like to dress up. Uh, Joseph Aboud was here not too long ago. 
Oh, he's great. Great guy. And he yeah, was yeah. talking about, you know, his style. He said, I like simple and I like earth colors. He said, that's what I look for. But he said, I, I think it's important to dress up. And, and I agree. I, I have a, a personal philosophy. When it comes to dressing up and going wherever I happen to go, it doesn't matter whether it's casual or dressy, I always feel like I want to dress nice and, mm -hmm. and look good. And the reason for that is I say, do I want apologies or compliments? If you go someplace and, and you're not dressed well, you're saying, oh my God, I didn't realize everybody was all dressed, I'm so sorry. <laughs> or if you go someplace and you really are dressed pretty well, everybody's saying, hey, I like that shirt, I like that tie. Right. So I, I, I'd like to go a little more further with that. Um, there's this, you know, dress down look. How do you feel about that in terms of how we generally dress these days? Well, I think it's gone too far. Mm. It's really gone too far. Yeah. And I, the way people dress in airports. Yeah. And first of all, it's a safety hazard. You yeah. Know, like you're in an airport and you're in a flip flops and a long maxi dress mm -hmm. or something and men are in like sweatpants. Yeah. I mean, it's just. Why are we doing that? No. I mean, it doesn't look good and it's not even like comfortable. I know. I, mean, I, I, I would always wear a, a sport coat or something flying. I still do. Yeah. I mean, I, I tend to always try to wear like cotton and leather on a plane. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to wear anything synthetic. Right. Um, so, I mean, I, I would wear like jeans often, or but I mean, I try to wear like mm -hmm. um, that kind of fiber, yeah. which is supposed to be, you know, safest thing to fly in. Right. But I would never wear flip flops or high heels. No. I would never wear high heels. Would you, would you like, will Nicole Miller like to see people dress up a little bit more? Tell, tell me how you feel well, about that. I mean, first of all, it's killed my tie business, this casual <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, right. dress down casualness. Yeah, right. So, I mean, I really miss that because I wish men would go back to wearing ties more. Mm, that would mm -hmm. be great. But no, I don't, I don't think people look good looking like slops. You know? So c can that change? I mean, you know, what, what, it's driven by a lot of things. I mean, you know, the internet, social media, personalities, celebrities, and so forth. They control a lot of that you know, fashion and well, style. Well, I don't know, but I mean, I just know so many men that just say, I just won't wear a tie, you know, mm. unless I'm going to like, you know, yeah. you know, a special event or something. Yeah. And even like jackets, people are, you know, I mean, it, you, you would look nice if you're wearing a blazer, you know, and a, and a shirt, even if it's open yeah. at the neck, right. but a lot of people won't even like dress like that. You know, a, a lot of that formality is gone. Uh, sometimes yeah. if I'll, I'll spot a video, from 1955, in fact, you know, you, if you're, you're online, sometimes you'll see a video that they post, 1955, and they show Fifth Avenue, New York. And you look at the people that are walking around. You've seen it. And the men wore hats. Remember, they, men wore hats. Hats. And women wore hats. And women were, the women were, and if you, if you see them walking around, everybody's dressed. Take a look at a picture, a, a baseball game, Yankee Stadium, you know, 1956. And you look into the crowd, oh, did right? did they wear suits to the game? They wore suits <laughs> and ties. Right. And, and the little kids, you know, were wearing a little hat and, and women were dressed and so forth. Today, if you take that same scene, that same picture, everybody looks the same. Yeah. It yeah, doesn't matter true. what age group you're at, doesn't matter what gender, everybody looks the same. I know. It's incredible. Know. And like sweatshirt and crummy clothes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's uh, terrible. <laughs> I know, I know. You know what? I, I love talking with you. I got some questions that I always like to throw out. Okay. And uh, if, you, if you could say to yourself, I wish I knew this earlier in life. Something that you, you know, wish you might have known when you were growing up that might have helped you um, on a personal level, on a professional level, something that you wish you had known. I think you have to be your own advocate. Yeah. Because if you just sit and wait for things to happen to you or like say, okay for now, or this is okay for now, you know, you should never feel that way. Mm. Because, you know, I feel like sometimes you'll, you know, people will be dating somebody and they'll go, oh, he's okay for now. And that's like wrong. You should never say, if it's okay for now, it's not okay. Mm. Like if it's your job is okay for now, yeah. it's not okay. I see. I mean, if there's anything that you feel that way about, you should look to change it. Mm. Maybe you can't change it tomorrow, but you've got to think, think about changing it. And whenever you have to just be an advocate for yourself, yeah. And not wait for somebody else to be mm -hmm. out Be your own you. person. Yeah. Be your own no, person. No, but you have to be. But, you know, I see that a lot of aggressive people get a lot far more, get farther than people that are timid. Mm. But you, you can't sit around and think that it's, it's going to happen to you or they're just going to discover your talent because you're mm -hmm. so talented. Right. I mean, that's rare that that happens. Mm -hmm. You have to push to get your talent noticed. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Uh, I, I think you have to, you know, make sure you go out there and protect yourself. Um, you often think about that, you know, things you wish you had known. And if you were going to pass along some nugget of wisdom to a newborn baby uh, that they would keep somewhere, and then when they're old enough to understand it, they would go back and, and read it and say, oh, I'm so glad that she told me that. 
What kind of advice would you pass on to a newborn and say, you should think about this? I know you just mentioned, you know, being your own person, but what else would you, you know, impart? I don't know. I mean, just, um, well, I feel like a lot of times when you're deciding to do something and, you know, like do it or don't do it, it's kind of like you always should do it. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't mean a, like a bad thing, but I mean a lot of times like like there's opportunities that you just like let slide. Yeah. So it's like opportunities will present themselves to your life, and I, like we all sit back and think, you know, about like oh the house we didn't buy, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, <laughs> or the stock we didn't right. buy. Right. Yeah. Some regrets. You know, or, I wish I had done that. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I think <clears throat> you have to look at your life that there's going to be all these opportunities that are going to pop up in your life, mm. and to make sure you're aware of these opportunities and you take advantage of them. Yeah, I think that's very important. I think many times I've always had a philosophy: when something feels a little premature that's the time to do it. Because if you're, if you're thinking about something, you know, it might be on your mind, like I wish I could uh, move or something or, or, or change my job. Right. If it starts to grow in your mind, then that's a good time for you to say, well, maybe I really should be doing that. And yeah, then start I, taking some action. I completely agree. You yeah. do? Yeah. yeah. But very often there's this little voice in your head mm. and you don't always pay attention to it. Mm. So, you know, if you've got that little voice yeah, or something. Yeah, listen to that, that little voice. Yeah. Um, I also, you know, feel Patriotism is very important. Uh, I, I think our country needs to be brought together. Uh, and we talked about this before we went on the air. You yeah. know, there's a lot of divisiveness, a lot of hatred and That's anger out there. Percent. We don't like it. We don't no. like it. And, you know, and looking for ways. So talk to me a little bit about your feelings about America, uh, you know, th the good things about our country, the opportunities we have here, and some of the things we need to work on, Nicole. What are your thoughts? Well, I, I think that people don't like really appreciate America enough. I mean, they don't mm. appreciate what a great country we live in and what great opportunities we have here. And why is that? And why, well, how come they don't appreciate it? What, what's wrong? I, I don't know, but I, I just feel like there's so much negativity now yeah. and everybody is looking for something to hate and to something to change. Mm. And, you know, I just feel like we're just so lucky to be here mm. and, you know, I mean, it's just a fabulous country, and there's it fabulous is. things to do here and opportunities. Yeah. And I don't know. I just get tired of people being so negative all negative, the time. Negative. But, Everybody's you know, like, but we're looking, Nicole, for answers, okay? I mean, we're all looking for answers. You and I are sitting here now and, and saying, what do we do? What do we do? I mean, I always look to leadership, yeah. and I say, you know, we need people who are going to push, push us in the right direction. Right, right. Well, um, I think a lot of the negativity stems from jealousy, and mm. I think a lot of people are very jealous, and that's why they look to You're push right. people down. Right. But, you know, it's really interesting, like, Eric Adams made a great speech the other night mm -hmm. at an event I went to, yeah. and it was really a very nice dy dynamic speech. I wish more people had heard it, oh. but it was really about stopping the hate. Stopping the hate. Stopping the hate, yeah. yeah. And, and, and it was really, really very impressive. Well, you know, it's good to hear that. I mean, I think we need so much of that. I mean, I, I would just like to be able to see our leaders turn around and say, okay, we're going to have a campaign. Uh, we're going to try to be more kind to one another and do something. I mean, form a campaign that you might have hands across New York, you know, go into all the boroughs and, and for one day everybody starts thinking about civility. Well, that's a good we, idea. You know, <laughs> doing something. I mean, but creating uh, programs um, you know, you, if you remember, it's always uh, a protest. There's never always like a, a positive protest. thing. Yeah. Remember, remember Nancy Reagan? She had a campaign: just say no, just say no to drugs. That was very effective. Right. And, and I think that if we have campaigns where we're actually asking people to take action, smile, uh, to, uh, you know, smile when, when you're out on the street, look at somebody and, and wave or something. Just do something. I know it sounds corny, but we need to do something to reactivate our feelings. We really do, on a positive level. <laughs> if you smile at somebody in New York, they'll just think, <laughs> think you're weird or they're hitting on you or something. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I still have a lot of things to talk to you about. I, I know you're married, happily married, and you have a son. Yeah. And, uh, in fact, you were telling me about that little necklace that you oh, have yeah. on there. Tell me about that. It's a little palm tree. Well, my son's name's Palmer, and this um, friend of mine had, like, a, her father's a jeweler, and... Um, she gave it to me. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> great. I was very envious of it. I said, oh, I want one of those. And she goes, you can have mine. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Um, do you believe in love at first sight? I really don't. No. No. I, you know, and it's funny because um, certainly I dated a lot of people before I got married. But I, I don't know. It was, it was always people that, like, grew on me that I actually didn't like at first. <laughs> so when you decided to get married to your husband, or what, what, was the, what was the turning point? Well, no, I mean, we were actually friends first. And we ah. were part of, like, the same, like, friend group. And we hung out together and whatever. And yeah. grew on each other somehow kind of organically or whatever. But I feel like, yeah, I feel like that's always happened to me. I ended up sort of 
dating somebody that I kind of knew already a little mm. bit. Wow. Yeah. How many years you've been married now? Um, 28. 28 years. And when you start thinking about your life, you say, you know what? I mean, I, I think about life and I say, you know, it's great. And, and there's still more to go. I mean, what, what dream do you have? I mean, here you are, you've accomplished so much. You've done so many things. What's, what's left for you in well, your life? Well, actually, I've been uh, traveling a lot. Yeah. So I actually, you know, <coughs> COVID cut down on travel. So mm. I've actually been trying to, you know, I've been going on trips that I might not have normally gone, go nice. on, gone on. And yeah. Oh, this year I was um, a judge for Miss USA. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you, you've been doing that. You've been on a lot of television shows, too. Uh, uh, Iron Chef, right? And, uh, yeah, yeah, that was The fun. Price is Right, you were on that, too? <laughs> oh, my God, yeah, <laughs> oh my God you've about, been doing a lot of television. I about that, yeah, yeah. That was, that so was. you still have some dreams, right? I mean, I, I, I think that's so important. Personally, um, that's how I live my life. I always feel like I, I, you know, I don't say to myself, I've been there and I've done that. I feel what's left. What's, what, what else can I do? And, and centenarians are great, you know, they, they, they have a, a sense of curiosity. They're always trying to learn something, they're active. They believe somebody else is part of their life, they share their life. And I think that's what keeps you young and youthful. What would you say is maybe your secret to living every day and what you look for today and tomorrow? Well, I mean, I always have a great time because I have a great staff in the office. Yeah. And they're all like 25. Mm. And they're still happy to hang out with me. <laughs> good, good. You know what they say, a friend is somebody who knows you and still likes you. <laughs> they yeah. know all about you. You know, and it's funny because I have this whole network of like past assistants. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of a funny story because I took one girl to El Paso, Texas to design cowboy boots. She ended up falling in love with the boot maker. Oh, and, really? and he gave her the business. So now she lives in El Paso and Look makes that. Rocket Buster cowboy boots, which is the best boots on the planet. Fantastic. And then I took another girl to New Zealand. Yeah. She met a guy there. Now she's living in New Zealand. And uh, boy, and you're a matchmaker. I, I tell you, they, <laughs> and girls are always saying, can I travel with you, Nicole? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's kind of nice. You know, you know I'm going to I'm going to like put the kibosh on this, though, like if, if I take them somewhere like no no dating <laughs> <laughs> that's it some some final thoughts i yeah. always i always like to ask you know maybe there's something that you want to share with our audience it could be some young person out there who's thinking boy i wish i could be like her i i wish i could have that kind of you know gift talent and success uh and it, it doesn't necessarily have to be about career but just something that you want to share with our viewers and listeners that you think is a personal message what would it be well, I, I think it's um, really important to have your own identity. You yeah. know, you have to really be an individual and stand out. And I think it's really important for everybody to yeah. out, go out there and try not to be part of the masses. Be your own self. Yeah. I, I, I've used this quote before and I'll share it with you again. And I like this a lot. Don't go where the path may lead. Go where there's no path and leave a trail. Oh, I love that. Isn't that, that nice? That, that is great. Yeah, I mean, and you've done that too. You know, you've been a real inspiration. Nicole, this has been fun. Yeah, but always. All my hands. Always I, I, great I, to see you. I really like to connect with <laughs> with our people and, and all of our viewers. I thank you so much, Nicole Miller. You're, you're a delight. Well, thank you. Good it's luck to you and to, to your family and, and continued success and happiness, okay? And the we'll great send Nicole you, Miller. We'll send you some more ties. Hey, I'd like that, okay? <laughs> thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Bye.